first thing I discovered was I needed reading glasses when I was assigned all those books. So here they are. So there I was, wriggling and swirling about with my scarves, moving around and in between the flailing arms and legs of my fellow cohort members. Nervous giggles gave way to all-out belly laughs as the rhythmic music flowed from our ears to our heads, to our hearts and through our bodies, coming out of us in movements that were organic, surprising, and above all, unique to each of us. As we let down our guard, a new respect and connection emerged. We were no longer a group of strangers who had come together with the common goal of earning a master's degree. We were a cohort, comrades, supporters, allies, and in some cases, accomplices. This was my graduate class, the group of people who would forever change my life. When Robin asked me to share my Graduate Institute story with you today, I knew there was no way I could do so without including so many of you in my story. As I have learned over the past two years, we are all connected, and it's this shared energy in our relationships that shape who we are. The Graduate Institute first called to me several years ago when I was just a beginning teacher. From a Music Educator magazine, I tore out an ad that was at the time called the Masters in Holistic Learning, and I put it in my box of stuff I might need someday in my attic. About two years ago, I was ready to pursue my master's degree, and my first stop was that box in the attic. There it was, sandwiched amidst the old, amidst the old resumes and certification information and sheet music, that little piece of paper that I had somehow known I would need someday. Only a few months into the MALT program, as I leapt and skipped and convorted around with my new colleagues, I knew this is exactly where I belonged. When Jim and Robin opened our first class by telling us that we were all going to be different in two years, I really had no idea what that meant. Part of me resisted. I thought, if I was pretty good the way I was. You know, why did I need to change? I thought this was a pretty bold statement from these two strangers, one who used a lot of big words ending in ology that had me in awe of his vast intelligence, and the other who wanted me to refer to him as my Sherpa. Um, I did have to go home and look that one up. I put all that business about changing in the back of my mind, and I started to do what I knew I was good at, being a good student, at least in the manner I thought teaching and learning worked. So I dug into my first reading assignment. I could definitely read three books and write about them. Well, how could that be? I was pretty smart. I quickly rediscovered that I really did not enjoy reading. I would rather scrub my kitchen sink or vacuum than sit doing anything. Um, it was not the fact that the book was written by a physicist whose technical scientific lingo had me baffled. It was more that I was not a skimmer or a speed reader, so if anything I was reading was longer than a Reader's Digest article, it just got my head all fuzzy. But I had to push on because our Sherpa, Robin, had us form into groups of three to work together on our first paper. I thought this was a bit odd. Uh, we were all adults, shouldn't we be able to handle this assignment ourselves? It was not until I got together with Chuck and Marissa to go over the material I learned um, that I learned my first MALT lesson, that people learn better in community. Marissa's youthful insights were both refreshing and challenging. How could we have read the same thing and gotten different meanings? And Chuck's scientific background opened up new conversations to areas I would not have even considered. We all had the answers that were right for us. This was a new way to learn, and it was both humbling and exciting. I kind of grew to like it. I never doubted any of Rabba's sherpa from then on. I was fascinated by each class and came home every weekend not able to contain the smile and the energy when I exclaimed to my family, we watched movies today, or I colored mandalas and made this really cool little picture book, and oh, well, next week we're taking a trip out to the Thimble Islands. So. Um, my friends in other graduate programs were very jealous. They had the textbooks and exams and disconnected lectures that formed their grad school horror stories. There was none of that here. This place is different. In our fast-paced, productivity-driven world, I found a group of amazing, insightful, talented, and enthusiastic people who did not demand any more of me than I was able to give, yet inspired me to give all I could. I felt blessed to be in the presence of such a variety of passionate and committed presenters who were actually out there in the world learning and sharing and making a difference as they went. Dialogue, dharma, film, art, movement, 
feng shui, which I know I still pronounce wrong, but you can't have any wrong answers here, so it's okay. <laughs> Mindfulness, flow, constellations, stories, and of course the part we all enjoy the most, play. I did not have to sit, sit still very often, and that was great. This was a true hands-on learning with universal themes that went so much farther to address how I could be a better teacher than classroom management 101 or advanced curriculum development would have done. It was very liberating to get into my body and out of my brain, trusting that I did not have to have a textbook to find the answers. Pretty scary for a girl who has to look to the expert instead of trusting her own opinions. The TGI mantra, mantra trust the process, became words to live by and also a running quip whenever the connection wasn't quite there for someone in the cohort. Were there roadblocks? Yes, of course, as any of my colleagues could tell you. Work stress, family tugs, financial strains, physical aches and pains we couldn't explain. We all had to sacrifice something to be here. But when the going was tough, however, our Sherpa stepped in to lead us back up the mountain. From Robin, I learned I could ask for help and support and it was not a sign of weakness. I know I had heard that lesson before, but as Jim said in one of our classes, you get it when you get it. <laughs> what I got was a life-changing experience. My story is the new relationships I created over these past two years and how they have changed my outlook more so than just my teaching. When I look at my students, I no longer see the troublemaker or the loner. I see a child who wants to be witnessed, one who has his or her own learning style. Our cohort has become this amazing, compassionate learning community, celebrating each other's joys and crying with each other's sorrows. I could have not gained the understandings I did without their unique and heartfelt stories intermingling with mine. My mentorship led me to a new bond with nature. Whenever I can't be found in the house, my daughter Elena says, oh, she's probably outside hugging a tree. <laughs> <laughs> this type of family banter and connection has been a wonderful side benefit that I had not anticipated, and, but feel so blessed to have had emerge. I've had so much more to talk about with them now, and it's all pretty cool stuff. They have taught me something I needed to learn, each of them, just by being their beautiful selves. I have also developed a much more healthy relationship with my body. Who knew that mindfully sucking on the same raisin for five minutes could change your view of food? <laughs> and of course, the relationship of the Sherpa. I will be ever grateful to Robin for the way you've helped me view the world through new lenses. The most, most important relationship, however, was the one with myself. I thought I had done this, had this down many times in my life, but when you start to think of yourself as part of this huge big bang of energy that's connected to everything, everywhere, every time, and every age, your, your viewpoint changes. I think it's very empowering to believe that all of us here in this room share this intangible life force and I feel tiny and huge all at the same time. I have learned to take ownership of me having a better sense of why I do what I do. So yes, Jim and Robin, you were right. I am different. The past two years have been filled with discovery and rediscovery, connecting the me of the past to the present me. I have a new energy that lights me up and propels me forward and have I and my colleagues become masters of learning and thinking? Absolutely. Because we have created meaning in our own stories, and as the heroes of those stories, we can now go out into the world as the newest agents of change. And I know you have all changed me already, and I thank you.